It's delightful to see you. Some of you are wearing masks and some of you are not. It's good to see your smiling faces. When we sing, though, we're going to ask people to wear masks just out of cur courtesy to one another. We're having communion today. If you're at home, now might be a good time to get a, a sacramental beverage and a piece of bread. For me, it might be coffee. You do you. But for those of you here, uh, we're still staying with what I call the communicables. Um, and I find it very difficult during communion to open these. So I would open it sooner rather than later. So, because there's a layer for the bread and you celiacs, you can't eat the bread. And then the foil. So good luck with that. <laughs> um, if you, say, you know this, are your cell phones on? No, your cell phone should not be on. Um, when you're asked to do so, please rise in body or in spirit. You at home, I'm really glad you're here. Um, if the video feed is interrupted, hold tight. We will record or we may come right back. But in either case, you can find us on our website. Today is free money day. It's Jubilee Bucks Day. You need to get your order in by 9 p.m to Bobby Fry. So grateful to her for all she does with Jubilee Bugs. Do I need to explain it more? I think we know, right? If not, somebody will tell me. Um, there is a, the dialogue went out. It's available if you haven't seen it uh, on the shelf right outside the office. And this is the season of Lent. We have been through so much in the last two years. I thought the most important thing we could do in Lent is to just be still for a minute <laughs> or two during the day. Remember that you belong to Christ and you, we belong to one another. Cross yourself when you're thinking about it. And we have a, um, a prayer list with a scripture and a, um, names of members of the church. And if you skip a day, that's okay. Just go right back on. Look at the names. Think about the people that make up Southminster. And on Sundays, um, we're remembering the ministries that we support. So please take a look at that. Let's see. There's an annual meeting in our future, the last Sunday in March, March 27th. Staff and moderators... Have your annual reports in this Wednesday. Guess what I'm doing this afternoon? I'm writing my report. Hope you do too. And Thursday is the deadline for session docket items. And my least favorite Sunday is next Sunday. Daylight savings time. The clock goes forward one hour. I hope to see you here next week. Yes, good luck with... I understand you won't be. Clever man that you are. Okay. And Blair has something to say about cookies. Yes, your reward for getting up early next Sunday and being here is cookies, which we'll have to pay for. Um, <laughs> our youth mission trip is heading to Huntington, West Virginia, late July, so it's kind of fundraising season. And our first fundraiser this year is a, uh, is a, a cook, not a bake-off like we did last year, just simply cookies. Um, so the youth and their family be baking cookies. We could use a few other people if you have cookies to boast, and I know many of you do. If you bake us a batch of cookies, just let me know if you're interested. And then after worship, this coming Sunday on the 13th, as you're leaving, there'll be some of our wonderful youth out there offering cookies for a donation to our youth mission trip. Thank you. Will they be prepackaged? They will be prepackaged, okay. yes. You don't just stick your hand in a cookie jar. That's, that's for Winnie the Pooh. Right. That, yes, okay. And um, for those of you at home, you're at Southminster Presbyterian Church, which is 680 South Park Boulevard. I love to meet people. Give me a call. Thank you. And now, Jim Messmore, I'm looking at you. Do you know what month this is? It's March Madness, and you're not in charge. Let's hear a word from Troy Hammer.
as we kick off the season of Lent and the lead up to Easter Sunday, let us also not forget that in two weeks we have Selection Sunday. And it's time for March Mission Madness once again. So for those of you that have participated before, you know that this is a fun way to raise money for the missions uh, by uh, entering a bracket or as many brackets as you would like. It's a way to get your friends, family uh, involved as well. It doesn't have to just be limited to those uh, that are uh, part of our church. Uh, you can please get your neighbors, anyone else involved uh, that you can. Uh, it's $15 to join uh, per bracket and the top four vote getters uh, or point getters uh, get to put the money towards the mission of their choice. So again, get out there, get as many people involved as possible. There will be additional information coming in the, the e-dialogue, watch it in the bulletin, and there will be an e-blast uh, that goes out as well. The uh, last day to sign up is going to be the morning of March 17th before the actual games begin. We're going to be using the ESPN uh, bracket uh, platform again this year. So we'll have more information coming. For anyone that's new, there will be instructions for how you sign up. For those that have done it before, you can use your account from last year as well. And if you have any questions, my contact information will be uh, included. So please feel free to reach out to me directly. I'll be happy to help you uh, through any step of the process. So again, just to kick off uh, to the season of March Mission Madness and uh, looking forward to having another fun year. Thank you. Thank you, Troy. And now let us prepare our hearts and minds for worshiping God by praying for one another, by making the prayer of confession our very own. Let us worship God together. <clears throat> the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Please join me in the call to worship as found in our bulletin. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Let, let us, us worship, worship our, our living, living Lord. Lord. And now let us rise in body or in spirit and sing hymn 19, Hold Me Fast. And this is number 19 in the worship supplement. It's number 19 in the worship supplement. Thank you very much. But it's also printed in your bulletin.
Let us open our hearts and minds to the truth of our lives and let us offer that truth to God. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Let us pray. Gracious, loving God, we come to you admitting the truth of our lives. There is much that is good and beautiful and much that is hateful and hurtful in us. We love with condition, we judge, we condemn. Heal us and forgive us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Now let us continue to offer our hearts to God in silent prayer. We pray these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. Amen. Now let us proclaim as Christians the perpetual gift of grace from God. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope. We have an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. fruit, you can sit right there, little Sarah, little Blair. Okay, this is great. <laughs> if you read the bearing fruit, you know that this is a very special day. Our church's birthday is today. Well, yesterday. We're 61 years old. Yay! That's great. And one of the ways we celebrate it is we uh, put our leaves on the endowment tree. Now, did you know there are many ways to pray? There are. I like to run. When, well, when I'm really anxious and upset, if I walk fast or run, I pray out loud, it helps me feel better. But I, it kind of gets the sense of urgency there. Um, do either one of you want to tell me what you do when you pray? I think you go horseback riding.
So I forgot to give you a microphone, so I'm going to repeat you. You ride your horse, and in creation, you feel closer to God, and you often pray. There was a famous monk when, uh, who said, in answer to the question, uh, why do you, if God is everywhere, why do you pray out in creation? And he said, it's easier for me to find God there. It's not that he's not there. Do you want to share anything about how you pray? Okay, you pray before all the animals are awake, including the one that you're married to. All right, way to go. Well, there's many ways to pray. Um, last week we talked about praying using our luminarias. We prayed to fight cancer. Um, this week, uh, we're dedicating our leaves and we're praying for the future of the church, but also giving thanks to the people uh, who are part of our congregation. Um, let me embarrass Sandy Lapata. She gave a leaf in honor of 50 years of marriage. Yay, Sandy and Ned. Um, some of these are memorials and some are bequests. We'll be talking about those more later. But also, did you notice this? Did you see these flowers? These are sunflowers and they have, they're attempting to have the colors of the Ukrainian flag. Sunflowers are the symbol of the Ukraine, and what's really wonderful is all the people who signed up for flowers during Lent said it was okay to have sunflowers. So that during Lent, we are gonna remember the war in the Ukraine and pray for peace. And I'm even praying for Russians. Um, I think they're caught up in this too. And I'm a little mad at Putin. So, actually I'm very mad. Um, <laughs> but let this, when you see this during Lent, remember to pray for peace, okay? So I have a little gift for you too. Um, Joe and Elsbeth and Hammer people, if you'd been here, let's, let's have a little prayer. Loving God, we pray for peace. We pray for faithfulness at Southminster in 61 wonderful years of uh, loving, living, and forgiving together. Um, may this season of Lent, we ask that this season of Lent, peace would happen. Peace in our hearts and peace in the world. Help us to pray in many ways that you might uh, not only hear us, but our hearts would be changed. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. Now let us clear our thoughts and prepare to hear scripture. Uh, today, uh, coming from the book of John, let us pray. God, our helper, and your Holy Spirit, open our minds that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may be led into your truth and taught your will for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So Steve has the pleasure of hearing part of the sermon and then reading scripture. I want to tell you what happened last Monday night. Last Monday night, Sue Nisley and I went to a prayer vigil for the Ukraine. And we learned something new. We were sitting there and we kept seeing all these sunflowers. And I'm like, what is that? She's like, I don't know. We found out. We found out that sunflowers are a symbol of the people of Ukraine. And they're also a symbol of peace. Did you know in 1996, the defense ministers of the United States of America, Russia, and Ukraine planted sunflower seeds at an old uh, nuclear missile site because uh, the Ukrainians decided to give up nuclear weapons forever. That was a little bit over 25 years ago. So, but why sunflowers? Well, the um, 
Ukrainians are Orthodox. So they're part of the Eastern branch of the family tree that is Christianity. And that branch, which also includes the Greeks and the Russians and a few other people, they're super strict during Lent. They don't eat dairy. They don't eat poultry, eggs, meat, fish, sugar. Yeah. Wow. And oil. But there is one oil that they're allowed to use. Sunflower oil. And so the sunflower is a friend to the people of Ukraine. Isn't that a beautiful message? I like it. Um, Isaiah says, beautiful on the mountains are the feet of one who brings peace and good news. Do you want to be a messenger? Um, the thing is, there's the other messages, right? Like, don't shoot the messenger. Not all messages are good. Mary and Martha sent a message to Jesus, their dear friend. A message that their brother Lazarus was dying. You see, Jesus had to leave Jerusalem quickly. It's a little ironic, by the way, that the man who stopped a poor young woman from being stoned to death was uh, later threatened with the same execution, throwing stones. The authorities started picking up rocks and Jesus left. What, what, what's going on there? Why do they want to throw rocks at Jesus? The authorities heard loud and clear the message of Jesus. You see, Jesus claimed not only to be sent from God, but to be God. He said things like, I am the good shepherd. I am the gate of the sheep. I am the light of the world. Those are not real humble things. And they got the message that Jesus was going to tip their apple cart, just like he had flipped the tables in the temple court. The authorities were not happy with the message of Jesus. So Jesus left Jerusalem and went beyond the Jordan River about 64 miles from Bethany, from uh, where Mary, Martha, and Lazarus lived. 64 miles is about the same distance between here and Rockford, just to give you a sense of how far away he went. And now I want you to imagine, Lazarus is sick. He's near death, and you are the messenger. Mary and Martha have entrusted you with the message that they need Jesus to come back to Bethany and heal their brother. It's their last hope. And so you walk the 64 miles. It's a two-day trip. Now, if you're this messenger, it is likely that Mary, Martha, and Lazarus are close to you. It is also likely that you are a disciple. No, you're not one of the 12, but neither are the people at Bethany. But you are a follower of Jesus. You trust Jesus, and you are committed to Jesus. And so you head out with the terrible message that Lazarus is greatly ill. You will travel two days by foot to deliver a message of this serious situation. I want you to listen to Steve read John 11, 1 to 17. And I want you to imagine that you are the messenger as he reads. <clears throat> now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was, one, was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, 
Though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let's go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? Those who walk through the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring mainly to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go, and we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had also been in the tomb four days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Steve. <clears throat> you are the messenger. What did you expect when you came to the home where Jesus was staying? What type of reaction to your message did you expect Jesus to say? Did you expect Jesus to leave right away? If not right away, surely the next morning. Jesus had been known to heal from a distance. Why didn't he heal from right there? It's a puzzle, isn't it? But no, when you gave your message, Jesus said, uh, his sickness will not end in his death, but will bring greater glory to God. And then Jesus waits two days before going and caring for the one he loves. I hate waiting. Not only did Jesus wait two days, but when he decided to go, the 12 tried to talk him out of it. Did you notice that? They weren't like, hey, let's go take care of Lazarus. They're like, no, 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 no. Don't you remember they were trying to stone you? Because this is a dangerous trip. It's not simply a um, mercy mission. Jesus will go and lay down his life for Lazarus. You know, the disciples said something right. The last time you were there, they stoned you, but you got to love Thomas, right? Taciturn Thomas. He reminds me of Eeyore. He says, I'm going to Bethany, and let's go so we can die with Jesus. What do you think, messengers? What will the home going be like? When you get to Bethany, you're traveling for two days, and as you approach Bethany, you and those traveling with you, including Jesus, hear that Lazarus has died. You hear that Lazarus had in fact been in the tomb four days, and in your grief, your head bows down, and the grief and the sorrow and anger well up four days and then you do the math it took you two days to get there even if Jesus had left immediately Lazarus would have died your effort your message was worthless. I'd like you to hear God's word found in John 11, 18.
to 27 and then skip to 32 to 35. I want you to hear the word of the Lord. Imagine you're the messenger. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem some two miles away and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them with their brother. And when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to Jesus, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet. This is the other sister. Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. And when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? And they said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So have you ever overheard a conversation but you didn't want to be impolite, so part of you wants to hear what's going on, and the other part of you is like, no, this is none of my business. I'm going to stay away. It's very conflicting. Perhaps I'm the only one that struggles like that. Okay. So imagine overhearing this conversation between Martha, Lazarus' sister, and Jesus. What was her tone of voice? When I read scripture, I gave her kind of a uh, strident, stinging tone. But perhaps she said, in a sadness, Lord, if you'd been with us, my brother would have died. How would you have read it? Would you have been tempted to say, because you're the messenger and you know, Lazarus was already dead by the time I got there? Or just keep your thoughts to yourself? How do you hear her words? So the conversation shifts back and forth about last things and then Jesus says, I am the resurrection, the source of life. Those who believe in me will live even in death. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never truly die. Do you believe this? This is a stunning remark. Jesus is talking about why he came. Martha says, yes, you're the Messiah even as her heart breaks. She's looking towards last days. She got the message, but not all of it. Martha goes to the tomb. And the Apostles' Creed is right there. Martha goes to the tomb with Jesus, expecting nothing but tears. Martha is worried about the stench of death. When Jesus orders the stone to be removed, she's like, oh no, Jesus, he's gonna smell. Her brother is dead, really dead, four days dead. If you're a Princess Bride fan, he's not mostly dead. He's really dead. Jesus healed many people, and he raised people from the dead, not just Lazarus, but none of them had been dead four days. And Jesus wept. And the original language gives us a sense that he's groaning. Can you hear that? Can you witness that? Have you seen someone groan when they cry? Why the tears? Why did Jesus cry? You're the messenger exhausted from a round trip. Are you like uh, Mary, Martha, the disciples, the, the consolers who say, oh, look, he loved Lazarus. Couldn't he have saved him? Are you hoping for something more? Why the tears? I don't know. We don't know. 
there's many reasons, but one reason that I, I kind of hold to is that in raising Lazarus, Jesus had to die. Because to make death die, Jesus had to die. He literally had to lay down his life so that life would be made available to all of us. This is the beginning. This is the hinge of history. A week later, he's on the, 10 days later, he's on the cross. He came for Lazarus. And he, he isn't going back. He's beginning. His hour has come. The next section of the Gospel of John is called the final hour. And that's the message. Jesus loved not only Lazarus, Jesus loved you. Jesus loves us. Jesus laid down his life for his friends. Messengers, what is your reaction to Lazarus walking out of the tomb? Jesus calls Lazarus forth. What, what do you think? What do you feel? Are you there helping to release him from the grave clothes? Are you too stunned to do anything? And what might you, the messenger, tell other people about this amazing thing that you witnessed? Life out of somebody four days dead. This is a wonderful demonstration of God's love. And the authorities, the ones in charge, were scared witless. They decided to kill Jesus. And not only did they decide to kill Jesus, they decided to kill Lazarus as well. It's kind of silly. It's like, he didn't rise from the dead. Look, he's dead. That's what their thinking is. They're grasping in their fear. And they couldn't see the message. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Jesus' life is like a seed sown in the ground that we might have life. Authorities missed the message because of fear and tried to kill a miracle. We are messengers. The message Christ gives us is one that gives life and love to everyone. That is our message. And 61 years ago, Southminster held her first worship service. And the seeds for a Christian community were sown, and we continue to bear the fruit of God's love. Life in Christ has made a difference in our lives, here in our community, and around the world. We have sought to love God, love neighbor, one another, even our enemies. We have benefited from the ministry of others that have lived here before us. And we are sowing seeds to bless and benefit others in the future. That's what our endowment tree is about. So uh, David, I forgot to ask for the picture of the endowment tree. Can you put it up? But it is not a passive gratitude. It is an active prayer. As we live together, we are blessing others. We lay down our lives not by dying, but by living, by loving, and by forgiving. Your message is simple. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And now let us stand and affirm what we believe as Christians by sharing in the Apostles' Creed. Let us begin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And while we remain standing, can we please sing in preparation for communion, I am the bread of life. It's hymn 520. music. It's a perfect song to usher us in to Lent. Thank you both Tom and Sean. And now let us respond to God by giving our tithes, our offering, our lives to our Lord. You prisoners in yourselves, or you in private hells, carry a liaison. Oh, you hungry and ignored, who thirst for something more, carry a liaison. You who feel so lost, but are afraid of being found. You who are in chains, but are afraid to live unbound, carry a liaison. Carry a liaison. Poor, less lovely, needy people living in this world Spinning round and round and round, round and round and round. For all us lovely broken people living in this world, that's spinning round and round and round, round and round and round. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Carry it. 
eleison, carry eleison. You children ripped and torn, battered, bruised, and worn, carry eleison. Look hate in the face, locked in hate's embrace, carry a song. You have given up and can't see anywhere but down. You have lost all hope and think it's nowhere to be found. Carry a song. Carry a song. Carry a song. Carry a song. For all us lovely, needy people living in this world, spinning round and round and round, round and round and round. For all us lovely broken people living in this world that's been in round and round and round, round and round and round. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Carry a song. Carry a song. There is mercy enough, there is grace enough, there is love enough for all of us. There is mercy enough, there is grace enough, there is love enough for all of us. There is mercy enough. There is grace enough, there is love enough for all of us. There is mercy enough, there is grace enough, there is love enough for all of us. There is mercy enough. There is grace enough, there is love enough for all of us. and have sent your son to be king of kings. Accept the offering of our gifts and our lives in the service of Christ's kingdom. He is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Kyrie eleison, Christ have mercy, is one of the most beautiful prayers. When you think of the story of Lazarus, but also the stories of the people from this congregation whose leaves we are dedicating today, um, there was some, something happy, 50th wedding anniversary, but the rest were uh, deaths. And I'm not afraid of death, but I don't like getting there. And that's what this meal is about. Jesus is preparing to sow the most precious seed of all, his life, in order that we might have life, but not just life here, not just life with 
in heaven, but rather a new kingdom. That is the end of the story in the Bible. It's not life in heaven, it's a new heaven and a new earth. So when we take this meal, let us remember that promise, that this is not just a funeral meal, but it will culminate in the wedding supper of the Lamb. Enjoy this, even if you cry. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us continue to pray. It is truly right and our greatest gift to give you thanks and praise, O Lord. For when we were chained in sin and death, you came and unlocked the door. You have sown your life that there might be a harvest of many. And for that, we sing your praises and we join the angels and archangels together as we sing. And blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, he took upon himself the weight of our sin and carried the burden of our guilt. He shared our life in every way, and though tempted, was sinless to the end. Remembering all your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this fruit of the vine from the gifts that you have given us and celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, as a living and holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. According to Christ's commandment, we declare, we remember his death, we proclaim his, let's do it with me, folks, we're gonna pray, <laughs> I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. According to Christ's commandment, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And now we lift before you the concerns of this particular body of Christ. And we thank you for the people on our endowment tree who are more than simple names. They are people that we love and we know. And we ask that the ministry of this congregation continue that post-COVID we might become even stronger and that you have something new for us in the future. We think of the Orthodox Christians whose Lent will begin on Monday with a special service of forgiveness. They don't use ashes. They take the hard road of forgiving one another and I pray for a miracle in the Ukraine as Russian and Ukrainian Orthodox Christians turn to you and ask for your forgiveness. Work in the world, bring peace. And, and we lift up um, those mighty winds that we had last night. Um, six people were killed, two children as well, in a tornado south of Des Moines. 
Bless the people in that region. Bring comfort to those who mourn. We pray for those who mourn, for our good friend Bill Curry. His service will be on the 19th. And Linda Meester, whose service will be the 12th. And we continue to remember families who are mourning, particularly those that were taken while they were still young. We lift up those affected by cancer, Dan and John, Kurt, Karen, Connie, Beverly, Shalane, Rod, Harleen, Jim. We hate cancer. And we ask that you end it. Um, inspire scientists to bring a cure and bring healing and hope to all those that wait. Um, we lift up um, Mike and Karen's father, Frank, who are friends of uh, Sean and Susie. And we pray for healing and give them hope. We lift up uh, prayers of adventure for Megan. Linda Ellinghausen's great granddaughter is moving to California to start the next chapter in her life. Keep her safe. Bring her new friends. Help her to find a good fit in her new occupation. We rejoice in new life. Penelope Grace Fry. Allison Shirley Ross and Avery Rose. May these young women grow up into people who know your love and can share it with others. May they be a joy and may they experience joy in their own lives. And we left up Deborah, a friend of Steve Hankel's, who is defending her ordination on Tuesday. You have been at work in Deborah's life. Continue and show your radiance during this examination that she might feel your grace with her and that all that are there witness your hand upon her life. So I'm so glad to be without a mask, Lord, but I still lift up the world. There are gas prices are high. It's not just the war. There are also strained relationships due to the pandemic. Ask us, help us uh, to be calm, forgiving, and loving in the midst of this. And we lift up those that are still feeling uh, vulnerable and are vulnerable. And uh, we bless our leaders as they discern the best way forward on many fronts, the war, COVID, I bless the president all the way down to the village president here in Glen Ellen. Our leaders need you and they need your wisdom. Speak to them in the night. Give them guidance. Give them a sense of your presence. Make them attentive to the spirit's leading. And we lift up those that have uh, physical challenges. Barb's Aunt Ruth and Cousin Mike, Amanda, ask for prayers of peace. Frank, Angela's father, for his surgery. Ed Koska, who is punning with people, always trying to be in a good humor, but trying to get well at Tabor Hills. We lift up Norma, Jen Kaskovich's mother. We lift up former pastor Rich Thompson, hospitalized after a fall. We lift up Katha, a friend of the Jezorskis, who is now in hospice. We pray that you would give her a sense of your presence and that you would strengthen her sons as they are present uh, with her during this final stage of her life. And we lift up Judith, friend of the Ellsworth, Carolyn, friend of Angela, Renee, friend of Angela, and there are many struggling with depression. There are many struggling with family concerns. And so, you are the hope. 
We thank you for food pantries, PRC, Lakeview, Glen Ellen, and we thank you for this body of believers who truly try to live faithful lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear are our prayers. God bless all the world. Guard our children. Guide our leaders. And give us peace. And now we are bold but invited to call you Father as we join together in the disciples' prayer. Together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of his arrest, our Lord Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks for it, he broke it and said, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant poured out in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's saving death until he comes again in glory. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. And now as we Listen to our communion music. Let's open our communicles.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take, eat, and drink. Most loving God, you have given us a share in the one bread and the one cup and made us one with Christ. Help us to bring your salvation and joy to all the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and now please rise in body or spirit as we continue to worship God in song. Those at home and those present wearing masks may sing. a Russian soldier with sunflower seeds. Uh, I was going to share it in the sermon, but I decided that it would be better to share it now. And I'd like you to go look it up. Um, the, the, the Ukrainian woman was understandably upset, but I would like to think that we get to show, sow seeds of grace and mercy with our lives. But please let us pray for the peace of the entire world. And now, may the grace the peace and the mercy of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love, both far and near. Now and forevermore, amen. And now go and serve the Lord. The cross. We shall break it. The bread. We shall break it. The pain. The joy, we shall share it. the gospel, we shall live it. the love, we shall give it. the light, we will share it. the darkness. God shall share it. For Jesus' sake, amen. Thank you, Sean Salins and Tom Anderson.